Welcome everyone. In this video, we're going to go through everything you need to know to get the best out of driving the Jubilee and the AF steam locomotives. We've split this video up into chapters so that at any point in the future you can simply jump to the start of the relevant part that will help you if you get stuck. In this first section, we will be taking a quick tour of the locomotive cab and finding out where all the controls are. What each of them do will be covered in later sections in greater detail. This is the regulator and is part of your speed controls. You move it by pulling it up to apply more power and down to apply less. The reverser or cutoff is the other key part of your speed controls and also sets the direction the locomotive will move. You operate it by rotating it clockwise to go forwards and anti-clockwise for backwards. A setting of 75% is fully forward and minus 75% is fully backwards. This control is the combination brake and allows you to apply all the brakes on the train. These two controls are the large ejector and the small ejector and are used to release the brakes, simply rotating the controls to go between fully closed and fully open. This gauge is your vacuum brake gauge and tells you what the brakes on the whole train are doing. If the needle is set at zero, then the brakes are fully applied. Below the reverser is the cylinder cox lever which is simply pushed forwards to open them or backwards to close them. If you find your wheel spinning, you can use this sander control to apply sand to the tracks and improve grip. Move it this way to apply sand when moving forwards and this way to apply sand when reversing. This gauge is the boiler pressure. The red line indicates the safety limit and if it reaches this, then the safety valves will lift to let the steam out and prevent an accident. The blower is used to create extra draft for the fire, useful for such situations as when the train is stationary. Simply rotate the control to go from completely closed to fully open. There are two damper controls on the floor of the fireman's side, the front and rear dampers. In their lower positions the damper is closed and when lifted they are open. These also control draft for the fire but are effective when the train is moving, heating the fire up and generating more steam. In this section, we will be covering aspects of the locomotive on how to make the locomotive move and accelerate. There are two controls that primarily make the locomotive accelerate. These are the regulator and reverser. The regulator lets steam into the cylinders and controls the rate it flows. The reverser controls the direction the locomotive will move and how much steam from the boiler is used. The brakes will be covered in a separate section, but for now, to get started, move the combination brake handle to release and the large ejector to fully open until the vacuum brake gauge reaches 21, which tells you the brakes are fully released and then move the large ejector back to closed. We will also cover the cylinder cocks in more detail in a later section, but for now, we simply ensure that they're open. To get going from a standard start, Set the reverser to fully forwards, which is 75%, and apply a little regulator. As the locomotive accelerates, bring the reverser back towards the middle, i.e. 0%. The more you accelerate, the more you can wind it back, but make sure you don't go below 25%, as this is to ensure better efficiency of the locomotive. If you find the locomotive begins to wheel slip, indicated by spinning of the wheels as seen externally or by the red marks on the speedometer as part of the HUD, simply close the regulator and allow the locomotive to recover, and then simply reapply the power again. If you find that your locomotive is unable to apply power without slipping, then use the sander to apply more grip, but don't forget to turn it off once you've finished accelerating. Boiler and Steam Chest in this section, we will be describing how the locomotive is powered using steam, how you can find out how much steam you have available, and how you can help manage that as you drive. As the driver, you are partly responsible for the boiler pressure since you're the one consuming it. The bottom left HUD shows you the locomotive boiler pressure and the steam chest pressure. The boiler pressure is how much steam you have to use in total, and more is created automatically by the firebox and the fireman. Your main concern is how you use the steam, not how it's generated. The steam chest is how much steam is being used to move the wheels. As you open the regulator, you'll see the steam chest filling. As you apply the regulator, be mindful not to add more if the steam chest is near the pressure limits. It won't cause problems, but it will waste steam. 
You can affect how much boiler pressure you consume using the regulator and reverser controls. The indicator in the middle of the boiler pressure on the HUD tells you if the boiler pressure is going up or down. As you speed up, move the reverser back towards a minimum of 25% to make a more efficient use of the steam. If you find the boiler pressure is getting too low, reduce or completely close the regulator to allow the pressure to come back up. Cylinder cocks. In this section, we will be describing the purpose of the cylinder cocks and when to use them. Steam is pushed through the cylinders to power the pistons, but if the pistons aren't moving because the train is stationary, the cylinders can begin to cool and the steam condenses back to water. Water doesn't compress the way steam does, so if the water is allowed to build up in the cylinders, it can be fatal, or at least an expensive repair damage to the locomotive. To avoid this, before setting off from a standing start, ensure your cylinder cocks are open. Once you've heard half a dozen or so chuffs, you are okay to close the cylinder cocks. While the cylinder cocks are open, there is less pressure making it to the cylinders, so be mindful that closing them will cause your steam chest pressure to increase at a greater rate, and adjust the regulator accordingly if required. Brakes In this section, we will go over the different brake systems on the steam locomotives and how they're visible on the HUD so that you can quickly see how much brake is applied. The Jubilee and 8F use a combination of vacuum brakes to control the brakes on the coaches or wagons you are hauling and a steam brake on the locomotive itself. Two separate sets of controls are utilised, one is used to apply the brakes and the other is used to release the brakes. The combination brake lever controls the application of both brakes at once. The larger ejector is used to release the brakes once the combination brake is set in the release position. In general, you should leave the small ejector in the open position. The BC indicator on the HUD tells you the amount of brake pressure on the steam brake, i.e. how much brake is applied on the locomotive only. Zero means no brakes at all. The VAC indicator on the HUD will indicate to you the amount of brake pressure applied on the vacuum brake, i.e. how much brake is applied on the rest of the train. Zero means maximum braking. You can independently control the steam brake and lock it into position. To bring the train to a gentle stop, use the combination brake to manage the brake pressure and keep it around 12 inches. But of course, you should adjust this as required to ensure a safe stop. To release the brakes, set the combination brake to release and open the large ejector fully. Once the brakes are released, don't forget to close the large ejector as it's consuming steam from the boiler whilst it is open. Climbing out of Liverpool Lime Street. In this section, we will be giving some driving tips on climbing the gradient out of Liverpool Lime Street towards Edge Hill. As you start out of Liverpool Lime Street, you will be facing a 1 to 94 gradient immediately, which is quite steep. For shorter trains, it's not too hard to do, but for the longer 10 coach trains, this can present a challenge. Start by opening the cylinder cocks. Set the reverser to fully forward. Release the brakes via the combination brake handle. Apply some regulator to get the train moving. After a few chuffs, close the cylinder cocks and draw the cut off back to 50%. Add more regulator, keeping a close watch on boiler pressure and the steam chest pressure. Don't apply more regulator once you're seeing steam chest pressure near the limit. Around 15 miles per hour, drop the cutoff back to 25%. Keep applying power as required. With a 10 coach train, you should be able to meet or exceed around 20 miles an hour by the time you get to the top at Edge Hill once you get the hang of it. Slow, careful movements. In this section, we will give some tips on getting better control of the locomotive when you only want to move it very slowly or a very short distance. If you are moving on a turntable or moving to couple up to some wagons or coaches, you may find these tips helpful. Small applications of the regulator and putting it back to the closed again mean you don't have to wait for the steam chest to empty before the locomotive ceases accelerating. 
Quick open close movements will help. Open the cylinder cocks to take some of the power out of the steam. This quick guide should give you everything you need to get started and enjoying driving the AF and Jubilee. We recommend getting some practice with each and completing several short scenarios should also help. For further information, head to our official forums. Otherwise, thank you very much for purchasing the Spirits of Steam and have a great day.